Hello, welcome to another stream. Oh, hello, hello everyone. Hello, Navida HG, Beat Stream, Droka, I could do go on the third, Caustic, uh, Jump, Jump. Fourth, uh, hello, 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 Prince. Uh, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today is, according to the schedule, is Friday. No, the gods' schedule. Um, well, I mean, actually, ca calendar is a made-up thing anyway. So, uh, so that means today, according to the schedule, we're doing a random one-off stream, a random one-off stream, and, um, um. Yeah, the topic of today's stream is generating audio. So there is a library that I wanted to try for quite some time, which is called LeapSound.io. LeapSound.io. <clears throat> and it's a C library. Um, and uh, yeah, it basically uh, wraps around the major like backends, like Jack, Pulse Audio, also Core Audio, and Wasapi. Wasapi, which is apparently a Microsoft thing. Uh, so yeah, essentially you can write, it's just like SDL but for audio, right? You see, it's just SDL but for audio. I wanted to learn this thing, I think this thing is kind of interesting. Uh, set jump? What the fuck? Depends on the respective backend. What's Doesn't that depend... <laughs> Does not have definition, runtime type information or set jump. Perfect. Uh, Kolumbetka, thank you. Thank you so much for 11 months of tier 1 subscription. Almost a mother flipping year. How about that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic leap sound IO club. Uh, so, um, hello, useless pony. <clears throat> so, let me see. Uh, yes, 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 yes. But uh, since it's a C library and I've been programming in C4, for a very long time, I'm already sick of C, to be fair. <laughs> I have too many projects in C, it's just like, C at this point kind of makes me puke. So, uh, I want to have, uh, I want to try to program on the stream in a different languages. So, as you can see, I need to constantly switch the languages, otherwise, otherwise I get sick. So, uh, yeah, so I decided that instead of C today, we're gonna use uh, another language that makes me sick, and even more so, um, uh, called Rust. So, yeah, uh, we're gonna program in Rust today. So, as far as I know, Rust does have wrap, um, wrappers around LeapSound.io. Rust LeapSound.io. So, should we press the forward to... Okay. Not one, but even two of them. Several people tried to... Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, we're gonna pick the one with the most amount of stars. So, both of them are shit. Both of them have a uh, low amount of star. And apparently... Well, this one is abandoned for sure. This one doesn't look very abandoned. But I actually saw a different one. Um, so... That one? I don't remember to be fair. I guess that's the one. Uh, so maybe we're gonna go to the Rust crates. Right. Rust package registry, as it's as everybody calls it. Um, sound IO. And we're gonna just pick that one, I suppose. There's also leap uh, sound IO sys. And uh, which one do we want to know? Uh... <laughs> no, you, you didn't. I, I fucking hate Rust. Okay, you didn't. Uh, so uh, let me let me see. Sound are you Rust? Uh, I guess we're gonna use this one, right? I guess we're gonna use this one. This one well, uh, sounds like a um, like a good candidate. So, but what about the sys? I'm not sure about the sys. Sys does not exist, as you can see. Uh, I guess it was part of the sys thing game. So, okay, let's let's just use that one. So, so it's still work in progress and the design is still in flux. 
Playback and record do work properly and the row bindings in Vips are complete. Okay, so maybe we're gonna use the uh, the row bindings then. Here's another Rust wrapper for lib.io, it's that one, so they reference each other. So this one is also abandoned, um, mm -hmm, more like sus. <laughs> when your library is uh, sus. All right, so let's make a cup of tea. So I'm thinking maybe fuck all of those wrappers and just write our own one. What do you guys think? Is that a good idea to write uh, your own wrapper around a library? Um, I have no idea how to do that, but we can try to learn that. Right. So that could be a pretty, pretty good exercise. Fifth wrapper. <laughs> yes. I mean, nobody wrote like a proper wrapper for this shit. Like, why, like, why do I have to suffer and use their shitty wrappers when I can write my own shitty wrapper? You know. So, so if you have to choose between using someone else's shady wrapper and your own shady wrapper, which shady wrapper you would choose? Just think about it. Uh, you have to choose between two shits. Your own shit doesn't smell. Uh, nine. Hello, welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, hello, hello. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> Not invented here, dude! Oh my god! Really? Writing a wrapper around around well-developed uh, developed library is considered invention in 2021 programming? Really? It's a fucking wrapper. Dude, holy fucking shit. You're literally, by writing a wrapper, you literally don't invent anything. This is the least amount of effort you can even ever put into the project by just making a fucking wrapper. It's so fucking low effort, I wouldn't even consider calling it a reinvention. Dude, holy shit, this is so cringe. Ah! Ah! Oh, why are you reinvent the wheel? Why are you writing another wrapper? R rapper is not reinventing shit. It's just a fucking wrapper. Come on. Come on, dude. Seriously. Um, right. So, um, yeah. Eh? Uh, to build our ass. Build our ass. Nice. <laughs> so I want to know how you're generally right, rappers. How you're... <laughs> Could you hyper? Could you hyper? <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I'm going to go to the kitchen, turn on the kettle, and I'm going to be back. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. <clears throat> All right, so I need to come up with a name for the current project, for the uh, today's project. So what is it going to be called? Um, uh, uh, 
Mm. Have you considered uh, creating a coin for yourself? According to Tsuring, it's not inventing. What the fuck are you talking about? <sighs> Who is this troll? Who is this troll? Mm. Oh, they're Russian. Okay, that explains a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, time out of one hour should be enough for you, I think. Uh, around one hour should be alright. Okay, so. Uh, I need to learn how to uh, do this thing. Um, Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's call it sus. Yes, it's so it's it's related to uh, sound, so it's gonna be sus. So the library is gonna be called sus. Oh, just just to be clear, okay. Uh, why, why did they time out that person? Because they said absolutely fucking stupid shit. Uh, I was talking about uh, the fact that uh, writing another wrapper is not reinventing things. Then they're talking about something about coins and somehow that is using the same logic and according to that it's not reinventing, which is absolutely like no connection to what I said before which is uh well obviously a trolling so this is what what i timed uh, out them for do, do, do you guys understand now look I, I just didn't think that it needs explanation i, th I thought it's like really obvious but uh, maybe it was not obvious just in case it was not obvious i am, am explaining exactly why this person was timed out um and i, I suspect that they're gonna be timed out even more in the future according to their behavior I've, uh, i saw so far so yeah okay mm. Okay, so let me see. Uh, first, we need to learn um, how to um, mm, do this shit. Um, learn how to write C library wrappers. Right, so we need to learn how to do that. Uh, so after that... Um, um, Write simple. Ah, let's let's actually call it like write hello world uh, using lib sound io uh, without uh, without without any third uh, third party wrappers. Okay, so um, generate some sounds using uh, leap sound IO. So that's the plan. Uh, that's the plan. <laughs> so and because uh, right now I'm not working on leap sound IO directly, right, I'm gonna be learning how to write wrappers, I need to change my title. I'm legally obligated to change my title, otherwise people will start calling me a clickbaiter and a scammer and all sorts of horrible shit, even though the the whole topic of the of the stream is still about sound. But no, I actually, uh, yeah, I'm not allowed to use that, uh, to use that title anymore. Okay, uh, let me see, let me see, how should we call it? Uh, wrapping C libraries in Rust. This is what we're gonna call it right now. 
Uh, this is what we're going to be called right now. So I one of the library uh, that I usually that I used so far when I was developing CM was uh, Encursus, and Encursus, as far as I know, is very thin. Um, it is very thin wrapper around Encursus. So let's actually take a look. Uh, let's actually take a look. This is not great. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let me see. Crates IO. Uh, curses. Mm, I think it was N curses. Mm -mm -mm -mm. N curses, and uh, it probably also depends on uh, other shit. So I'm gonna just use this uh, library as an analogy. I, I think it depends on N curses. Cs, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a build dependency. It uses cc and package config, which is rather interesting. Uh, it uses cc and package config, and I suppose because it needs to, you know, find um, it needs to find the library using package config. And then it will probably link using C compiler or something like that. This is just a hypothesis. I don't know for sure. Uh, I don't know 100% for sure. So it also refers to a build script called build our s, right? Uh, build our s. Let's take a look at build our s. So, okay, so this is exactly what it's doing. Uh, rerun if environment changed. Okay, so. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Mmm, it's even the generating C code. <laughs> That's actually very interesting. That is actually very interesting. Mmm, that is actually very, very interesting. So I really like this idea um, of uh, using build.rs. I really like this idea of using build.rs and let's see what we can do with it. What we can do with it. Mmm. Though I don't quite understand where it does the linkage and stuff like that. Where does it do the linkage? You know what? I'm gonna actually uh, clone this entire thing and try to build it and see what's going on in there. Uh, let's just try to do that. Mm -hmm. Out9, please come down. Mm, Alright, so let me see. Mm, the complete library will go to... Okay, let's actually see. What's gonna happen? Mm. <clears throat> what is it fetching, by the way? Um, it's probably fetching the, the dependencies. <clears throat> Uh, so I put it into the third party. Uh, right, I put it into the third party. This is in the curses. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Leap. Mm hmm. What's up, Proton Chancy? Welcome to the stream. Mm -hmm. So, okay, there is LL, which is kind of cool. Here is LLRS. Uh, I need to remove this uh, white space mode. I need to remove this white space mode. Uh huh. Okay, so here are external functions as far as I can tell, which is pretty cool. Uh, these are external functions. Um, extended core, so this is configuration feature, there's nothing particularly special in here. Uh, I still don't understand how it links everything, so it doesn't really compile properly, uh, well it compiled properly, but it compiled with the warnings. 
uh, it compiles with a warning. Um, uh, okay, sure. I mean, it's a temporary timeout. Just wait until the end of the hour and you're going to be untimed out automatically. Don't worry about it. Uh, all right. But also keep in mind that if you're gonna repeating, uh, keep repeating this uh, the same behavior, you're gonna be timed out for more, like for two hours, then for more and more until you're gonna be banned completely. Um, so yeah, just wait until the end of the hour and you're gonna be timed out. Mm, okay. So let's pour a cup of tea. Mm. And interestingly enough, why specifically you? <laughs> why did they actually DM you specifically you? Like, do, do they know you? Or, or do you look like a mode? Maybe you look like a mode. That's very interesting, actually. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Me, yeah, maybe because you're active in the chat. That's that's true. Uh, Extern crate sleep C. Look at that. This is such an old C that they have still use extern crate and shit like that. Is there anything related to linking? Like, um, I still don't quite understand how this shit works. Like, for example, any mentioning of the linking. Uh, okay, so here is a build. Um, how do you link shit? Uh, this thing feels a bit complicated. Doesn't, doesn't look like it has anything. All right. Uh, how to write Rust wrappers? Maybe there are some tutorials. Apparently, it's not a very obvious thing to do. Imagine trying to commit, compete with C, right? Imagine trying to compete with C and making it not obvious how to write wrappings around C. So the reason, by the way, C++ was so popular is because it was actually super trivial because it's compatible on the level of the language itself. Uh, all right, so wrapping and save C libraries in Rust. Let's uh, part two of two. So we also have to wait for a couple of hours until the splash has uh, loaded up because it's a very important part of any Rust article, obviously. Uh, so, okay, so maybe... Like I cannot even do anything. What what is what is going on? <laughs> uh, I I don't know what the fuck was that. Uh, <laughs> maybe Rust FFI. I look. Like, I don't understand why it is not. A straightforward process like I just, just don't understand like wh why uh, link name snappy oh okay so maybe it is a straightforward process okay so that's that's cool maybe and curses over complicated it because this looks pretty straightforward to me uh, yeah this is actually pretty good and straightforward hmm I like that okay so let's let's read that <laughs> So maybe in cursor is actually just so we complicated it as usual. Uh, use snappy compression decompression library as the introduction to writing binding. Can we use it as well? Maybe we can use it as well. Yeah. Fast compression decompression. Uh, imagine save C wrappers. What is a save C wrappers? Oh, just a second. I need to I need to bring something. Up. Mm -hmm. 
Си Байден. Вот и Си Байден. Snappy is a compression. Do we have that in Debian, by the way? Uh, snappy. Mm. Uh, do, 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 do. So there's a go length snappy. Okay, here is the leap snappy dev. I think this is what we need to install chat. Leap snappy dev. Chat, do you consider yourself a snappy dev? Hmm? Leave your comments down below. <laughs> Why everyone is in the chat talking about Biden? I don't understand. Um, all right, so what do we have? Um, I wonder if now I have... By the way, I never heard of this library. Is that a good library? It's using C++ dance game. Disgusting. Fast compression, decompression. Mm -hmm. Okay. Package config list all. Uh, yep. Uh, snapping. Okay, so it, it's it's there, and uh, I just wanted to double check that it's there. C flex snappy and. Uh, uh, it doesn't have any C flags. Uh, what about lips? It, it just links uh, automatically. It doesn't require anything special, which is a noise. 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 Uh, do I have to use uh, cargo? Yeah, I have to use cargo for. An... Okay, so let's actually use that. So we have to link with that shit, and so on and so forth. Perfect. So um, searching uh, sus, and do I have to? Yeah, let's actually do cargo, uh, cargo init. I think this is how we do that. Is it gonna work? Okay, that worked. Oh, by the way, chat, chat, right before the stream, look, 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 look what I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that impressive? Isn't it? I upgraded my rust. It's a fresh, fresh as fuck rust. Uh, fresh as fuck. I think it's goddamn fucking amazing chat. <sighs> okay, so, um, can I actually not add white spaces to, uh, to the rust mode? Because it's kind of annoying, to be fair. Rust mode here is white spaces. Okay, yeah, let's, let's just not do that because it's, yeah, I don't like that. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, sus. Uh, so let's go to. Let's actually just start Emacs from within the folder and we're gonna start twerking. We're gonna start twerking. And uh, so this is gonna be Tomal. And the first thing this article says uh, many of the examples use the lip seek rate is, is that we need to add the lip seek rate. So let's actually quickly add it super quick. So in if I try to build this entire st stuff, uh, let's see what's going to happen. Um, we're downloading lip seek. Look, look at that. Look at that C killer. Look at that C killer depending on lip seek. Ah, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so extern. Do I really need to do extern? Uh, I don't think I need to do extern. I, I think I can just use leap size t. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and now uh, let me try to build that one more time, and I think it will just build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it just builds, but it complains about this thing uh, unavailable. All right, so if I try to say, okay, I'm using this function as an external function. Uh, and then 
Uh, can I just call it and see what's gonna happen? So, okay, I'm calling this entire thing, right? I'm just calling it. Oh, goddamn. My, my feature of automatically reformatting is so goddamn addictive, I cannot work without it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, because I press Alt Q and it just does this shit for some reason. I don't know why. Um, is there any way to integrate with Rust FM? Wait, there, there's probably something like Rust FMT. Is there something like uh, such thing as Rust FMT? How does it work, by the way? If, for example, uh, I put everything on a single line, right? I put everything on a single line. Um, and then uh, I just do Rust FMT. It just reformats this entire thing accordingly. Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, can I do the same shit as I did with a style? Yeah, let's give it a try. Um, wait a second, maybe Rust uh, format buffer. I think Rust mode supports that. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. So, uh, Emacs, so what I need to do here... Or maybe it's already bound to something, I just need to find the binding. A Rust format... Okay, so it's CF. Alright, so that means if I uh, have some sh something like this, right, some shit like that, CF, automatic reformats everything. Perfect! So, yeah, I just need to use a different key bindings every time I want to reformat the buffer. Uh, perfect. So now, if I try to build this entire shit, if I try to build uh, sus, cargo build, what's gonna happen? It is not working, could not compile sus. <laughs> oh, love it, fucking love it. Okay, let's take a look at what it says. Uh, holy shit! <laughs> look at that command line, look at that C command line. Holy fucking shit, oh my god. Oh boy. Anyway, uh, so <clears throat> help if this is intentional prefix it with underscore. I'm, nah. Uh, linking. Okay, so specifically linking has failed. Uh, okay, and and define reference to. S okay, perfect. This was intentional. I did that intentionally just to see if this line is very important. Okay, now if I try to. Uh, link it, right? Um, actually, why did I put C in here? Wait a goddamn fucking second. I don't remember putting C in here. You know who put C there? Rust FMT puts there. Who puts the C here? Every time I, I um, no no no, it's it's not a reflex. It's Rust FMT. It's literally Rust FMT that puts C there. It's it's not a reflex. I didn't know that. Like, it's like it's, it's, this is kind of sus. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, why not? I'm, it's just like a, it's kind of surprising. I didn't expect it. Okay, so what if I try to come uh, link with a non-existing library? Okay, so what if I try to link with that? Uh, how is it gonna work? Um, could not find... Okay, so it literally uses this name uh, in the linker. And if I try to link all of that, it seems to be working. It seems to be working. Okay, so apparently writing bindings in Rust is a very straightforward process. It's just... Uh, and curses overcomplicated it. Right, it's just in cursors over complicated. It doesn't have to be that complicated. All right, so I'm really happy that it's it's super simple. Um, so, uh, and if I try to run this entire thing, right, if I try to run it, it says hello world, but I didn't think it has to say hello world. I want to print X. Uh, so let's actually grab this entire stuff. Uh, grab this entire stuff. And uh, yep, 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 yep. And, uh, yeah, of course, I forgot to remove this entire thing. Um, run. Mass compression is 148. Perfect! Perfect, perfect, perfect! So, uh, here's FFI. Yesu, 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 kawaii, desu, desu. Yesu, 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 kawaii, desu, desu. Is that it? Do I need to know anything else? I guess I just need to know uh, the corresponding C types and stuff like that, but apart from that, it looks like 
that said, um, can we try to link with a more complicated library? Uh, can we try to link with a more complicated one? What about SDL? What is Biden? Why everyone is talking about Biden? Isn't that like a president or something? Like, what, what does Biden have anything to do with Rust? I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know how to program. Uh, so, wh why everyone is talking about this shit? I don't understand. Um, <clears throat> Kikona propaganda, exactly. It's Kikona propaganda. Uh, okay, so let's try to do something like this. It's gonna be SDL init. Let's try to link with SDL. Uh, Biden only knows Kubal. Alright. Uh, so maybe we're gonna do something like extern uh, fn uh, sdl init and we have to provide the flags but the flags have to be um, in 32 and where can we get in 32 so I need to go to libc propagander what ah, I see what you mean um docs are s i think that's what we need to do here right so i just want to need lib uh, c i suppose lib c is only needed for like types right it's only needed like for types and whatnot in our case do, do we wait a second size t can i just use u size aren't they the same the same size because it feels like yeah, libc is kind of redundant in this particular case because Rust have u size, and I'm pretty sure u size is the same size as the size underscore t in c, so it should be straightforward. Like it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, okay, so there is no dependency. We don't depend on c anymore, and can we compile this? Now that's a proper c killer. That's a proper C killer. Doesn't depend on libc. Now that's what I'm talking about. Holy shit! And it it works. It fucking works, mate. This is goddamn fucking amazing. Um, all right. So what about uh, extern uh, C? And let's do a fan SDL init. Right. So here is. Why the fuck do you even need separate packages for bindings if writing binding bindings is as easy as that? So this is my next question. Like, why the fuck do you need the bindings in the first place? <laughs> you can just link with C... F like, why? Is that a, some sort of, like, a NPM syndrome that people are following? Um, because Rust programmers are scared of C. Ah, that makes sense. Okay. So I, I just personally don't... Uh, not scared of C, that's why I just don't understand that. Uh, so we don't need libc. Fuck libc. All my homies hate libc. Uh, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna accept the flags, right? So the flags are gonna be uh, U32. I I'm pretty sure this is just U32. And uh, what we're returning here, we return some sort of a, like int. And I suppose int is I32, right? And that should be pretty straightforward, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, um... mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, and uh, if we're gonna do the link, can I just do SDL2 electric a boogaloo? Mm. Mm. But to me, it feels like wrapping are always inferior to a good FFI. You just never had a good wrapping. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Mm. So, a fan dead code by default. All right, and it also complains about SDL2. All right, so what I need to do here, package config uh, libs, uh, libs SDL2. Okay, so that means I have to use the, the capital one, right? If it uh, directly passes it to the linker, that means it has to be capitalized. Um, and yeah, it seems to be working. It seems to be twerking. All right, so let's remove the snappy shit. The snappy shit. 
and it's gonna be uh, it has to be unsafe let's actually wrap the whole main in unsafe because we're gonna be calling uh, a lot of unsafe functions and shit like that um, so and it's gonna be sdl init and we need to know the flags this is the problem we need to know the flags and the only way we can know the flags is by looking at the headers uh, luckily i'm not an average rust developer i'm not scared of c and I'm not scared of raw pointers. So it's totally fine for me to go into the C code and just look up the uh, the definitions of the of the macros, like SDL init video or SDL init all. It's totally fine. I'm not gonna shed my pants. I have like five of them. I can change them at any time. So... <laughs> so uh, SDL init uh, video. Uh, it's it's equal to that. Um, so we're gonna do something like this, right? So this is the is SDL init video. Um, I wonder if I can do something like this, right? So this is SDL init video, uh, and I suppose it has to be U32, right? So this is U32. Um, are you doing fine today? Yeah, I'm actually totally fine. Uh, just. I'm just trying to recall what I uh, what I ate, ate today. So rice with tuna and uh, cottage cheese. So none of these things should actually affect my mood that greatly. Mm. Anyway, so um, let me see. Um, the question is: Does uh, Rust support this kind of syntax? <sighs> Okay, so invalid suffix u. Oh, that's a pretty useful uh, error message. That's a pretty useful error message. I can appreciate that. I can always appreciate a useful error message. Okay, so this is going to be uh, SDL init video, um, right? SDL init video, and this is going to be uh, a return, right? So, and we can say something like print ln uh, SDL init returned uh, this shite it returned this shite uh, okay so and let's just run it it returned zero I'm surprised that this is so simple it's kind it's kind of sus not gonna lie um, Okay, can I write a simple application like that? Let's let's actually try to write like a very simple application uh, in this style using only FFI. So SDL quit, SDL quit doesn't have anything special here. So SDL quit is just an SDL quit, as far as I can tell, right? Uh, SDL quit, there we go. Uh, should compile relatively easily. So SDL returned zero. <clears throat> So, um, the next thing you need to do, right, the next thing you need to do, you need to create a window, right, uh, you need to create a window, so it's going to be SDL, uh, I think it's not here, I think it's somewhere in the video, right, SDL create, uh, create window, there we go, cool, uh, you have to provide the title, right, so let's try to, oh, holy shit, okay, so this is the pointer. This entire thing has to return a window, right? I, I don't know how to work with the raw pointers in Rust, so uh, this is another thing that I will have to learn. Uh, but not right now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I have to put it like a fan. Okay, here's the problem. Rust FMT cannot... <laughs> <laughs> cannot format anything if it's not a correct Rust, okay. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense, sure. Uh, so the question is C strings. Uh, I'm not sure how you work with C strings in Rust, so let's actually take a look. Uh, so, creating safe interfaces. Okay, nobody cares about safe interfaces. Fuck those. Uh, from C to Rust. Mm -hmm. Packaging callbacks. <laughs> Mm, asynchronous callbacks, linking. Okay, this is actually a useful section. 
Oh, you can even specify the kind, like static and not static. Holy shit. Accessing foreign globals. Uh, interoperability with the foreign code. Uh, nullable pointer optimization. Colon Rust code from C. Uh, represented opaque structs. Uh, okay, so we have to use C void. Um, well, I mean, maybe you don't have to, but yeah, who cares? Uh, okay, strings. Mm, so they do have C string, something called C string. But the question is, what is a C? Well, it's some sort of like a. Mm -hmm. C string FFI. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me see. So there's a package called FFI. Maybe there are, there are a lot of useful things in there. I kind of like this package. I kind of like this package. So it has. I think it has everything that I need. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So representation of a borrow of, of a borrowed C string, a type representing an own C compatible null terminated string with a no new bytes in the middle. Uh, okay, so that's that looks interesting. That looks interesting. C char. Okay, so the standard library probably doesn't have libc, but it does have a C char. Or S row. I'm just not sure why it is not part of FFI. I'm not sure why it is not part of FFI. Um, okay. Rust FFI C strings. This is like, yeah, you, you have to Google this kind of shit. How do I convert C-string into Rust? Um, uh. So libc C char. I, apparently I do need libc. Um, okay, I'm, I'm getting really frustrated right now. It's just like... Overcomplicated all over the place is just fucking oh my god. Rust people being rust people yet again. Uh so So puts con C char, you have to use OS row. Okay, so let me try to use this OS row thingy. Uh will it will it work or not? Get them rust people. Uh so and then you can do as PTR. All right. Okay. So I suppose I can just do it like that. Okay. So um, yeah, title is going to be this. Title is going to be this. So it's going to be const char, and I'm totally okay with that. This one is an integer. Um, so let me align everything. Let me align everything. Uh, so this is going to be the position. This is going to be that, and uh, uh, also. Yeah, I also probably will need some sort of like opaque... Window is an opaque pointer, right? So window is going to be just an opaque pointer. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm ignoring the chat because you never help, right? You only confuse me even more. Uh, all right. So, uh, when I'm learning something, I'm totally ignoring the chat. You never help me. So, uh, yeah, this one is going to be I32. Uh, this one is going to be U32. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, how do I do the pointer? How do I do the pointer? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
uh, foreign call convention. Okay. Um, so it, it also said about something opaque, uh, opaque point, opaque uh, structs, right? So you can just do lib c void. How do I do c void without the lib c? It should be possible to do it like that, right? It should be possible to do it like that. Uh, so I need to go to here. Okay, there is a C void in here in FFI, so that's that's pretty straightforward, I suppose. Go with the C void. It's kind of strange. Like I don't understand one thing. Why C char is a part of row OS and not FFI? Like it's just kind of strange. Uh, and how can I see everything in FFI? So in here. Uh, this is std module ffi structs in nums in nums there's only c void there but not c char okay so uh, use std ffi uh, c void right so this is going to be c void um, and of course i forgot to put this entire thing in here and uh, i forgot how to do that because i'm totally thinking Mm, 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 mm. Ah, don't jump around. Yeah. Okay, it's just mutable pointer. Can I just return it as a mutable pointer? I think I should be able to, alright? C void or whatever. Uh yep. Okay, so it's actually <laughs> Yeah, so this is RustFMT that did all of that. This is RustFMT that did all of that. Cool. Um, I wonder if I can do something like if this entire thing is less than zero, then uh, we can panic. Uh, by the way, can I just do it like that? Mm, 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 mm. So std panic. Uh, does std panic accept? It's it's a module. I need a function I, or macro. I'm pretty sure it's a macro, right? Uh, and it uh, it has like a print ln style of formatting. It should it should have a print ln style of formatting, right? So uh, could not initialize SDL. Uh, SDL uh, get error, right? And SDL get error returns a C string, which is not easily printable like that, right? So um, let me see. SDL get error. Uh, they'll get error and um, to do uh, yeah it just returns that okay so that's fine for me we'll see how we can um, fix that um, or do something about it so it's gonna be const c char there we go um, so I'm pretty sure it could be something like with C strings or something. Well, it's it's not going to compile. We'll see how it will uh, com uh, complain about this particular situation. I'm just outlining what I'm trying to uh, trying to implement. Uh, okay, so this is going to be a window, right? This is a window, and let's create a window, right? I'm creating a window, um, and so yeah, I do need to use a C string thingy. Oh, then you really need to calm down, seriously. Uh... Mm -mm -mm -mm. So there is a new string. So CPTR. So the, I remember that the, yeah, SPTR, there we go. Uh, as, oh, perfect, it actually returns exactly what I need. So, um, that means I can, um, so FFI C string, right? Mm, FFI C string. <laughs> C string, uh, new, uh, hello from Rust, SPTR, there we go. Uh, then I can specify this kind of stuff, and the size is going to be this. Uh, yep. Okay, it doesn't allow me to split it because whatever. So, and then we need to have flags. Okay, the flags is the most interesting thing in here. The flags is the most interesting thing. 
Uh, well, not. It's it's not the most interesting thing um, because we can just you know copy paste them. What kind of flags do I need? I need. I think I, the only thing I need to here is resizable, right? So let's take a look. So here's the resizable. Here is resizable, and in this case, it's going to be U32. And uh, yeah, so that's the only one I care about right now. So here is the flag. Perfect. Okay. And of course. If uh, if window uh, is there a null for row pointers rust row pointers null mm, std pointer null I think oh you can oh you can just check if it's null or not that's perfect so that means. Uh, is null, right? I, I should be able to do something like that. I should be able. If it's null, uh, we're gonna do panic. Uh, could not create SDL window because uh, SDL get error, which is not gonna compile. We already kind of know, <laughs> uh, know that it's not gonna compile. Uh, all right, so cool. Mm. Okay, so what is complaining about? So remove this ah, fucking <laughs> god fucking them. Uh, shit, fuck, god fucking damn it. Okay, so all right, const i8 cannot be formatted with the default formatter. All right, so I wonder what we can do in this particular case. So, oh shit, okay. We don't own whatever is returned by get error. Uh, we don't own whatever is returned by get error. And I remember vaguely FFI had distinction between owned and not owned C strings. So I suppose if you want to print uh, the result of this function, you have to treat it as not owned because it's managed by SDL. Okay, that makes sense. Sure. Um, so, and I think not owned is something like CSTR. Uh, representation of a borrowed of a borrowed C string. This represents a borrowed reference to a null point array of bytes that can be uh, constructed safely from blah 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 yeah 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 okay so let's actually try to do that um it's gonna be sister uh and I'm pretty sure I can do something like sister and you and will that work will that work Okay, it still complains. Um, function or associated item not found sister. Sister was not found. Uh, am I stupid? I think I am. Mm, so, this example is not tested. This example is not tested. Hmm. From PTR. Okay, let's let's call it from PTR. Shut down 1510. Subscribed at tier one. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh tier one subscription. Your first subscription, by the way, and welcome to our epic Rust Club. How about that? Mm? We're all fans of Rust in here. Haha! <laughs> I absolutely fucking love Rust. It is so fun, look! Ah, no associated item fallen sister, it's so fucking fun. Thank you, thank you so much for the subscription, by the way. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Uh, imagine subscribing, thinking this is a Rust channel, and then no Rust in a year. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Uh, sister cannot be formatted with the default formatter. Okay. Um, what kind of formatter do I have to use in here? Okay, so here's the slice, two bytes. Uh, all right. Converting a foreign C strings to string. To string Lucy? Aha. Uh -huh. What, who's, who's Lucy? <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, what does it exactly do? Um, Convert sister into cow, XQCL. <laughs> Budge a cow. Um, so, 
<laughs> I cannot. Okay, I need to. I need to pour some water. I'm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cow means clone and right. Yes, that's what it means. Uh, the contest history are valid UTF-8 data. This function will return cow borrowed with the corresponding system slice. Otherwise, it will return invalid. Blah 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 blah. Okay, I see. So and then, do I really need to do into owned? Maybe Lucy should be enough. I think Lucy should be enough. Okay, let's let's give it a try. So what is it gonna say? Uh, it was enough, apparently. Uh, okay, method not found a result. Okay, let's unwrap this shit. I maybe expect uh, expect the unexpectable. Okay, uh, do we have anything else? Yes, yes, yes. Sister uh, from PTR. Uh, and then to string Lucy. Uh, all right. Okay. Holy fucking shit, mate. Um, wait. This system is delocated at the end of the statement, binded to a variable to extend its lifetime. Mm hmm. That's a good point. That's actually a very good fucking point. Because, but it's, it depends, right, rather. Does SDL copy the title? If SDL copies the title, it doesn't really matter, though, right? But if it doesn't, if I were an SDL developer, I would copy it because you never know where the title is located, right? It better copy it. But yeah. <clears throat> Um, all right. So let's extend it the, the lifetime. Sure. I mean, why not? Uh, so to to shut up the the, the rust. Right, let's just quickly do that. Uh, okay. This pointer will be invalid. Ah. Ah. Yeah. I see. I need to extend the lifetime of this thing. Right, and then as PT, I think that's what I need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, okay. Cool. Uh, cool, cool, cool. I see, I see. Uh, can we... That was an interesting formatting way. Uh, okay, so, whatever. Uh, you can actually... I'm not sure if you can see that, but every time I run this thing, it flashes. This is because it creates a window. It creates a window, and uh, then since the the program exits, it actually uh, closes the window. So we managed to create a window from Rust. Isn't that amazing? I think it's get them fucking amazing. And of course, it uh, doesn't deallocate the window, right? <laughs> so this is a very unsafe Rust because it doesn't clean up any of the memory it allocated, and that's. Perfect. I fucking love it. I hope all of the Rust developers who are watching me right now are fucking pissed off because I'm not going to fix that. Okay, so uh, let me see. Uh, SDL uh, renderer. Um, <clears throat> SDL renderer. Yeah, no, it's, it's not SDL renderer. It's going to be create renderer. 
Ah, isso, 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 que eu vou des 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 I'm sorry, by the way. Uh, okay. It would be kind of cool to create some sort of like um, aliases, maybe. Maybe some sort of aliases, but maybe later. So for now, this one is going to be uh, something like a mutable, a mutable C void. Uh, this one is going to be an index uh i32 and this one is going to be flag u32 and it's going to return another uh mutable void right and that oh i forgot to put the fan in here there we go so that that looks okay that looks okay uh I, i'm gonna add the aliases for for these things a little bit later uh, mm, Mm, so uh, let me let me see. Mm, so we create the renderer. We create the renderer, and uh, here is the window. So uh, when I create the renderer, right? When I create the renderer. Mm, so where do I do that? So the renderer is not located in here, right? Create renderer and uh, yeah, so it accepts the window <clears throat> and then index. What is index? Index is a driver, so it could be minus one as far as I know. And the flags, uh, the only flags we need right now is SDL renderer flags. So it's gonna be renderer accelerated. Uh, okay. Render accelerated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be U32. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be the second one. There we go. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that should give us the renderer right that should give us the renderer uh, and if the renderer is null if the renderer is null uh, we need to do something like this uh, could not could not create sdl renderer like this uh yeah we need to repeat that uh, at some point we'll probably have to uh, extract that to a separate function um, we need to extract that to a separate font. I can't fucking name it, okay. Uh, so, that looks okay. That looks okay. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Wait a second. I never heard of this function before. Create window and default renderer. I was always you. I was always creating them separately. Apparently, in SDL, you can create them simultaneously. That's very strange. Mm. <clears throat> so uh, here's the the thing. Here is the thing. Um, yeah, let's try to compile that uh, and see if it's going to work or not. Uh, no. So we need to organize the event loop. Yeah, we need to start organizing the event loop. So this is going to be like a, a quit, boolean, uh, false, and while uh, we're not quitting, we're going to be handling the events, right? So, for handling the events, we're going to have, uh, we need to do the following thing, sdl, uh, 
SDL event. Ah, so this is where it becomes very, very interesting because, yeah, you need to ha have the whole structure in here, right? Because it's a union. Ooh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I do remember that Rust had unions. Mm, Rust had unions, and unions is like an unsafe feature, right? So in a safe Rust, you're not allowed to use unions. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, and by the way, Aldman, I do think it's perfectly fine. And if you have any problems with that, I think you should reconsider your priorities. This is just a fucking language. Come on, it's a tool, okay? So, uh, we need to port, like, the entire union, because... Yeah, we need to port it, because I don't see any other way. I don't see any other way to do that. Hmm. Hmm. Or maybe not, actually. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, I have an idea. Well, let's actually not do that and let it loop. Let it loop. Let it loop. Let it loop. Oh, let it loop. Because the only thing we want to know, we want to see how it... Like, we want to render things. Right, we want to render things. Uh, does it have constructors? Who? Um, Rust? Rust doesn't have constructors. You use functions. Constructors are just functions, aren't they? Um, um, okay. So, let me, let me see. Mm. Yeah, so we're gonna just... The problem is that if I don't handle the quit event, if I don't handle the quit event, um, I won't be able to close this entire thing. Uh, let me show you. I will have to literally kill it. Uh, okay, so here's the window. We managed to create that window. We managed to create that window, but I cannot close it anymore. Uh, I cannot close it anymore. So the only thing I have to do, I, I think I will have to even uh, do it like this. 50, 0, 68. Yeah, I will have to kill it with minus 9. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, so maybe that's fine, because we're doing the... Um, the educational example, right, that's totally fine. What does minus nine do? I, I think it sends seek kill, specifically. Uh, uh, seek kill. That just kills the, the entire thing. <laughs> does anyone have any questions while I'm making a cup of tea? It's for six so months. Pop. Thank you. So Jim Pope, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, six months of tier one subscription and welcome to our epic Rust Club. Um, you can't catch sick kill, therefore. Yeah, so that's kind of the point of sick kill, if I remember correctly, right? So you cannot catch it. It's just like uh, the operating system telling you, that's it. I'm not dealing with your bullshit. You're gone. I'm not even asking the program whether you want to quit or anything. Not asking any anything. You're gone. So, that's it. Uh, you're Russian? No, I'm not Russian. I'm... American. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, what I wanted to do... 
Yeah, I want you to go to the kitchen. Okay, so we're gonna just do a sick kill. Uh, so let me see. Let me see, let me see. Uh, or N, SDL, delay. Uh, so let's have this thing in here. Okay, so this is going to be MS, uh, U32, and this thing doesn't return anything at all. So let's at least put some sort of a delay in here, so it doesn't uh, take over the whole core, uh, which is probably fine, I guess, I mean, but whatever. Uh, delay, and let's put like 100 milliseconds of delay here. All right. Um, so let's see what we're going to have in here, and it's going to be a cargo run, and... Uh, um, did it create it? Uh, yeah, here we go. Here, so it actually created it. And um, can I do kill all sus? Uh, can I do kill all minus nine sus? Yeah, okay, so I, I didn't know that kill all supports minus nine. So this is how we're gonna kill the entire thing from now on. Okay. Uh, so, um, the next thing we need to be able to do is to set the draw color, right? SDL set uh, render draw color. So we need this function here. Uh, SDL render set draw color and uh, let's -a go. Ooh -ooh. Oh yeah, we, we need to create that. To be fair, this is how I, I want to work with external libraries in Rust. I don't want to install someone, somebody else shady uh, wrapper. Uh, right, so I just want to use library and just add the bindings as they need them because it's like easier, easier to do that. And uh, yeah, you you don't depend on somebody else binding. You don't have to wait until they add something to the uh, to the wrapper. You don't have to submit uh, any pull requests to add them to the wrapper, and they're gonna ignore them. You don't have to do any of the shit. If it's as simple as that, I don't understand why do we even have these wrapper libraries? Like, why? But again, as I said, uh, Rust programmers are afraid of pointers. That's probably why. Um, Okay, so uh, here's the, gonna be the render, and this is gonna be a mutable, uh -huh, mutable C void. Oh. <laughs> I pressed MQ, uh, and this is what MQ does in Rust mode. <laughs> this is what it does. Uh, all right. Um, Oh shit, which kind of makes sense. If you used Emacs, this behavior does make sense. Uh, so yeah. Uh, U8, I'm gonna just assume that it, uh, it does have U8. Uh, and it returns I32, okay. Okay, perfect. Oh shit! 
I cannot do my favorite unpacking macro. At least I, I it's not obvious how to do it. Yeah. Can you do my C unpacking macro in Rust using Rust macros? Is it possible? That's a good question. All right. Um, <laughs> so renderer. Uh, we're gonna make it red. It's gonna be a red. Uh, yep, 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 yep. And this one is gonna be zero, but alpha is gonna be 255. Right. So it's gonna be red. And after we set the renderer, um, I think this is not the function I need, but the function I deserve. Okay. Uh, set. Cl uh, okay. SDL clear screen mm, render clear yeah. yeah yeah so we have to use sdl render clear uh all right sdl render clear this is gonna be that it's gonna be mute c void and clear never fails right so this one never fails so i don't have to worry about that uh, okay, SDL render clear uh, renderer, and I also need to use present, right? Present uh, SDL present. Oh yeah, I, I have to first also define this function. Okay, so all right, using SDL from Rust without any any SDL wrappers, pure FFI. And it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I'm actually surprised how good it is. So, yeah. So my, my, one of the main reasons uh, that stopped me from using Rust is that because all of the uh, C wrapper uh, C wrapper libraries are shit, uh, and they're either unfinished or they're really awkward or something like there's just complicated or something like that. But now I realize. I don't fucking need to use them. I just don't need to use them. Uh, I can just do every time I need to have a third-party dependency uh, that requires a C library. I can just use it directly. Um, okay, so maybe because of that, I'm gonna start programming in Rust a little bit more, because this entire like stuff with wrappers like always put me away from Rust. This, this is actually pretty cool. I really like that. Um, so. Okay, so let me try to do some stuff in here. For example, we can have an aliases for the opaque types and whatnot. Um, some for, sort of aliases for opaque types. By the way, uh, what's your... I don't know how to ask though. So, what's your progress on better C, uh, Hertz and Plus? Um, do you still plan to use better C for uh, bot writing or... Like, I never tried better C, I know almost nothing about it. So, was your experience with better C successful or not successful? Or what's your, what's your conclusion? You plan to use it? Okay, cool. Because better C from... What I heard sounds like a like a best of both worlds, right? Uh, you have the simplicity of C and the convenience of some of the features from D without the runtime overhead of D or something like that. So yeah, sounds like a pretty cool idea. Mm. Yeah, 
It is almost like C with templates without OP and without GC. That's already even better than C++, how about that? <laughs> that already sounds better than C++, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, because that's basically what I always wanted, like C with templates and without OOP and without GC. Well, I mean, C++ doesn't have a GC, but you, you, you see what I mean. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, so let me see how we can have type aliases. I think I'm gonna just close literally everything. And just close everything. Mm, okay. Uh, Rust type aliases. Mm. Mm, okay. So I'm pretty sure I can define something like SDL window, which is going to be just. Um, can I make it like a C void? And then renderer, right? And for all of them, I'm gonna say that they are mutable. Okay, so when you create a renderer, window will return SDL create window, right? Here's SDL create window. This is, well, what the fuck am I doing? This, this is SDL window. This is SDL window. Uh, SDL window. Mm, so here's that, and uh, this entire thing returns SDL renderer. So this is renderer. Okay, and every time we accept that, it's SDL renderer. There we go. Mm, 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 mm. I wonder if that will work now. This is just type aliases, but is there something like new type uh, type aliases uh, to tube struct the instruct cannot be used to, to qualify the type constructors um, maybe i don't need a new type actually maybe i just need that all right let's try to compile that and uh okay so convert the identifier to upper god damn it mm. Why this is a thing in languages? Like, why do you force this shit on me? I mean, it's not forcing, though, it's just a warning, but I mean, still. I'm this kind of person that cares even about warnings, so for me it's kind of painful to see the um, the warnings like that, but this is so annoying. Like, languages used to be... used to have the attitude of just enabling people to do what they want, right? So if you want to call something in a very specific way, just, just let people do that. Like, why do you have to annoy them? Like, when the attitude towards programmers changed that dramatically? Like, uh, I, I kind of understand why and how attitude has changed. Is that because the industry became like this conveyor belt where programmers are unified units and that's why we need to standardize everything. I, okay, whatever. Uh, that's why you need to even standardize this kind of shit. All right. It's kind of funny that it doesn't complain about functions. Well, because in functions it's totally fine. So, SDL renderer, SDL renderer. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. That that looks fine. Uh, did I create several of them? Yeah, so kill all sus. Uh, not, not that one, sus. Okay. Cool. So we can have at least this uh, sort of um, aliases and whatnot. A more 
type safe variant, a, a more type safe um, API would probably look like this. You would have something like struct uh, SDL window, right? So in, in this particular case, this one would be something like a row, right? Row SDL window, right? And then you would have like a proper SDL window, uh, which stores the uh, row version of it, like a row window, which is uh, a mutable pointer, a mutable pointer for uh, a row SDL window, for row SDL window, and it will also implement something like drop, right? Drop for SDL window, which uh, in turn will call uh, destroy and so on and so forth. So and. Um, all of these methods for the windows, right, all of the methods for the windows or for the renderers, they will be put into the implementation of the SDL window. So something like that, I suppose. I guess that's how you write the, uh, um, the safe version of this API, uh, which is... Uh, I didn't really want to do that, but this sounds like a pretty interesting exercise. We can do that. So we can do that. Hmm. Mm. <sighs> what do you guys think? So I kind of like seen uh, I kind of seen everything. Like uh, I do understand how to interface with C library. It feels more or less convenient. Um, so I could stop and start working on uh, LeapSound.io, but it's kind of interesting. Well, should we write the safe version of this API just for the practice? What do you guys think? Mm. Are you Jia Yang, old man? I thought Jia Yang was supposed to do that. Imagine actually both of you sitting on the sofa and reading at me <laughs> every time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, anyways, <clears throat> let's implement the... It's actually, it's actually not a sofa. This is literally not a sofa. This is two chairs. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but it's in fact just two chairs. So both of you can fit there perfectly. So, um, all right. Uh, apartment tour. Yes. Uh, so, what I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to rename this entire shit to, uh, to just a roll. The way I want to do that is I'm going to just do it like that. Roll SDL window. Uh, SDL render. Okay. So now we have roll versions of them. Perfect. I still cannot easily quit it because uh, implementing the union, uh, union struct is a pain in the ass. You know what? I have an interesting idea. So <laughs> the only thing I need to know is, wh is whether the uh, event is SDL quit or not. Uh, so it's going to be five head move. So the type of event is stored in here. What if I cal calculate the size of the structure uh, and create a Rust structure that only has this field and for the rest of them is going to be array of bytes just to pad them to appropriate size and just to receive <laughs> just just to receive the event into that area of memory and just to only look at the type that way i don't have to implement shit uh this is perfect i'm gonna fucking do that okay <laughs> so <laughs> uh, this is just fucking ideal uh because implementing all of these unions is just a pain in the ass i just don't want to do that fuck that um okay um, let me see. I'm pretty sure I can just do something like SDL2, uh, uh, SDLH, and return 0, and maybe I'm gonna do it like that. Uh, 
Imagine somebody joining the stream right now and thinking, what the fuck, this is not Rust, why are you programming in C? Yeah, so... Mm, so ZU, ZU, size of SDL event. Uh, all right, so what's going to be the size of this entire thing? I'm pretty sure I don't even need to link with anything because it's just a struct. And if I run this entire stuff, this is the size in bytes of SDL event, uh, which is perfect. Uh, so 56 minus 4 is going to be 52. So basically, I need to pad the entire structure with 52 bytes of, uh, of array. Um, okay, so let me let me see. So I'm gonna create just a struct. Struct SDL event, and it's gonna be just type u32. Ah. Okay. Um. Padding. Uh, U8, uh, 52. There we go. <sighs> Rapper C. Wait a second. Sounds like something important. Mm, other rappers. Uh, this is the most important rapper. It is fairly simple and ten. Do what C does. Aha. The order size, the alignment of fields. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. This is actually kind of important because structures in C and all of these native low level languages is such a pain in the ass because they always try to optimize, pad, align, and all of that stuff. And as assuming anything about structures is actually a very dangerous thing to do. Um, can you can you actually pack? Oh, you can even pack that. To strip any padding and uh, any align the type to buy, this may improve the memory footprint, but will likely have other negative side effects. Um, don't you have to add it only with 24 bytes? But the size of the event... ...56 bytes. And 4 bytes is for the type <laughs> oh i'm an idiot yeah i see what you mean well no i'm using you in okay so uh let's do c so we're gonna do c and the fair i kind of want to do packed right because we don't really know what exactly C does. Yeah, I think it's gonna. Be, it would be better to actually make it packed rather than C. Right. Yeah. Okay, so this is the type, and uh, in uh, event um, SDL quit. Okay, so this is gonna be our little. Pokchamp um, U32 uh, uh -huh. Okay good. So this is the padding, this is that and uh, event SDL poll events will need that we will need that cool then so this is going to be sdl event and this is going to be just a pointer to the event uh mute this is going to be a mutable pointer and it will return the i32 for for an error oh yeah so uh, cool Oh shit, oh fuck, I pressed something and now Emacs is going crazy, okay. Uh, Alright, this looks okay. Um, now, we're gonna try to allocate the event thingy. Um, let's actually put, make it as a mutable thing. Uh, so event, SDL, event, 
Can I zero initialize it somehow? Do I have to initialize it with anything? Okay. Probably not. I'm not sure. So while SDL event uh, pull event, um, how do I take a pointer? Is that how I take a pointer? I think this is how I take a pointer. Uh, Rust roll pointers. I forgot how to use roll pointers. Uh, you are reading an outdated edition of TRPL. For more, go here. Okay. Could you at least redirect to the corresponding section of the latest? Oh my god. <sighs> okay. Okay, so you probably take first a reference and then you cast it to a, uh, to a corresponding thing. Okay, so that's probably what we'll have to do. So, uh, as mute SDL event. So th this is what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you take a reference of it and then you cast it to there. Okay. Uh, then, um, and it probably has to be something like this. I forgot that uh, the type has to be like that. So, and if event type equal sdl quit sdl quit we're gonna do quit equal true that's it should be all right let's see if this shite compiles uh cargo run okay so this is that anything else uh all right remove this okay mm -hmm. Uh, expected build by found uh, all right greater than zero. Mm. Borrow possibly uninitialized. Okay, so uh, let me see how we can initialize all of that. So if I remember correctly, you can initialize it like this, right? So um, so the type. Uh, the type it has to be equal to zero. I don't remember if it's equal. The, the compiler will tell me. And padding will be, um, I suppose, zero fifty two. I think this is how you can do that. Uh, so let's see what the compiler will tell me. Uh, twice. Okay, quit has to be at least mutable. It has to be at least mutable. And it worked. Holy shit! My idea fucking worked. Almost. Uh, field is never read. Uh, okay, that that's totally fine. Let's actually make it uh, like a dead code. Warn. Uh, I think it has to be allow uh, dead code. Okay, so it it does work. So block uses type SDL event, which is not FFI safe. Okay, uh, so consider adding wrapper C or wrapper transparent. Okay, so what is uh, what about wrapper transparent? Uh, transparent. Uh, this can only be used on struct with a single non-zero sized single. Uh, the effect is that layout of ABI. Okay, so this is not our case. I suppose we'll have to use a wrapper C. Yeah, let's just use Ripper C. Sure, why not? Uh, okay, so that perfectly works. Mm -hmm. That perfectly works, and yeah, so I just close it, and yeah, that's actually a pretty cool idea. So we allocate exactly the amount of. Oh, that's a good idea. So let's actually do packed as well, just in case. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. This is a good trick. This is a good trick. Uh, so basically, we only care about the first field. So for the rest of the fields, we just pad it. Uh, system extracts behave like the type. Uh, so non-zero UB can be the same size as U. I'm not sure if I understand the context, but okay. Mm. Alrighty, this is nice because you can. We can at least. Um, get that working. Yes, we can at least get that working, which is which is nice. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
So, okay, so let's try to write uh, a safe wrappers around uh, SDL window and SDL renderer. To do that, right, so the safe wrappers are supposed to um, deinitialize and destroy everything. We need to implement destructors for the for the window and the renderer, right? So where is the window? I think it's somewhere here. Maybe it's a renderer, maybe it's a video, actually. SDL destroy window, right? So SDL destroy window. Okay, let's, let's grab that. <clears throat> and let's put everything in here. Um, so that will accept the window. Uh, SDL window. Right, so this is going to be mute SDL window. And uh, I suppose we need to do the same thing for the renderer. SDL destroy renderer. Destroy renderer. There we go. Uh, FM Okay. So use you you go by do. So interestingly in the event just a second, I need to grab uh, my chocolate. I need to grab some chocolate. If I still have any. It's the last piece of chocolate, unfortunately. Um, okay, go. Okay, go. Uh, let's implement the save shit. How about that? So we're gonna start with the window, right? So it's gonna be a struct uh, uh, SDL window, right? Struct SDL window. And in here, we're gonna just uh, keep the row pointer to the, uh, to the window. Row SDL uh, window. And it's going to be a mutable one. Uh, there we go. So we also need a way to construct all of that shite. To construct it. So um, mm, 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 mm. we have to provide the title. Uh, X, Y, W, H and the flags. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So implementation. SDL window. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like this. A fan, um, create maybe. Yeah. So I, I want to repeat the uh, the original API then. So it's gonna be a title, Mister Mm Hmm. And flux. There you go. Hmm. Hmm. The question is, what exactly we're going to return here? Um, so let's take a look at the result. Not not Rust. I want it result. Resuscitate. That was terrible. I'm sorry. Um, so the left one is okay. The right one is error. I'm a Haskeller, okay? Left one is an error, right one is okay. You cannot convince me otherwise. You know why? Because left one is an error, but the right one is the right one. The right one is the right one. That's why it is right. It makes it easier to remember. Um, okay, so um, left one is, uh, okay, so it's going to be SDL window then, right, so, okay. An error in our case.
Thank you. Thank you, Nani. Uh, yeah. Here's an interesting fact about OBS. At least about the current version of OBS that I'm using. If the internet goes down in the middle of the stream, you try to press exit on OBS and you exit. That doesn't quit the OBS process. This is like for real. Uh, like, and I was always curious, um, like every time um, when I, my stream goes down, I would restart my OBS and after the restart, my entire system would be super slow. This is because it's running two OBSs now. Because pressing that small thingy, let me show you, this small button, if your internet went down in the middle of the stream, doesn't mean that the OBS process will quit. I'm not even fucking joking. Like, it took me a uh, very long time to figure that out. Um, because I wouldn't expect it. Like, you would expect that if the win uh, window closes and you press exit, there's no uh, OBS process anymore. No, it's not the case if in this specific situation. It's not the case. So that's why now, from now on, I do kill all. Uh, now I do a kill all. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Um, mm, so this is gonna be a um, result. Maybe I can just return uh, OKEG. It, it will depend because uh, this entire thing may return uh, something incorrectly. So here's role and um, SDL create window. And now fun begins, right? Now the fun begins. I need to somehow turn str into the row string. <laughs> so yeah, uh, how do I do it right now? So I use title. First I create a sister. So I think um, maybe we can do that from the c string, right? Maybe we can do that from c string. So from um, from row. From back with null. Um, so from row, row accepts that. Maybe we can do that from um, back unchecked or something like that. Yeah, you can essentially take str and maybe con convert it to a back. But what's about uncheck? What's so uncheck about it? So creates a C compatible string by consuming a byte vector without checking for interior zero byte. Uh, without checking. Okay, uh, nightly attempts to convert to a C string runtime checks are present. I, I didn't want to click on that. Okay, um, uh, okay from str okay sure maybe from string to see as ptr wait I wish it would be a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. A string slice with the row pointer points to zero. This pointer will be pointing to the first byte of the string slice. Uh, okay.
something that is convertible to vacuum int. Okay. New compatible string with a container of bytes. This function will consume the provided data user and the line to construct, ensuring that there is a training zero. Uh, this training zero will be apparent. Okay. Uh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is exactly what I, I, I didn't. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> um, this is already does what I want to do. I don't know why it took me so much time to realize that. Uh, Roll title. Mm, Roll title and uh, Roll title uh, as PTR. Okay, so X, Y, uh, W, H, and uh, then we pass the flags. And um, here's an interesting thing. If um, row window, row title, row window, if row window is null, right? If it's null, um, we return an error. Uh, we return an error. Uh, so this is going to be um, sister from PTR SDL get error. Um, so I need to take a look at sister. Sister. Mm -hmm. To string to Lucy string. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a copy on the right. Lucy strings to str. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this one looks okay. Oh, all right. To str, and uh, we'll also need to map the. Well, yeah, we'll have to do it like. <laughs> So you, you can have an error in the middle of decoding an error. Right? So uh, okay, I'm gonna uh, postpone this entire thing, and I'm gonna right now just return uh, self uh, row row window like this, and it's gonna be okay. So this is gonna be just okay, uh, and looks alright. Mm, okay, so from pointer, so this is this returns a pointer, so we convert it to a string that already returns the result. I'm pretty sure I don't have to do a return in here because yeah, because ru Rust uh, and uh, in here. So I wanna essentially only map an error. Mm. So this is a string. So I probably have to first save it properly. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be like that. Error. Error message. And uh, so to str. Mm, so in the result, it's map error, right? Uh, and furthermore, we can take a look at UTF error, and UTF error can be constructed to a string, I'm pretty sure, right? It can be constructed from a, to a string. If you think about it, like if SDL returns UTF incompatible string, this is something wrong with uh, with SDL. So this is like straight up an assertion. If you think about it, right? So in that case, maybe we're gonna do the following thing. We're gonna do expect uh, expected SDL to do their job properly. Uh, properly and return UTF-8 compatible error messages. Right. 
so I, I think that makes sense like it's it's not my fucking job to check that it's, it's yours so yeah um so <laughs> it's gonna be everything <laughs> i mean come on seriously like like why am i even have to think about it uh so <laughs> Let's see what's gonna happen. Um, so I probably also have to wrap it in like string and stuff like that. Let's see. Uh, okay, so what's what's that? SDL error. Um, oh yeah, it has to be a row one. Mm. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So it's string. Uh, I forgot how you do that. Uh, I think it's just two string. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be two string. So, okay, this is uh, unsafe. Okay, so this is uh, this is what we're doing. Unsafe, unsafe. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Goddamn fucking perfect, mate. It was actually complaining about something. Uh, just a second. So unused, unused uh, struct is never constructed. Okay, this is perfect. Uh, do we need anything else from the window? I don't think so. Mm, no, I don't think so. Allocations. <sighs> um, uh, okay. Sure. Are you sure that uh, doesn't reuse some static buffer? Uh, I, I know that it reuses some static buffer. Um, okay. <sighs> All right. Let's let's learn how to do drop. Uh, I never actually wrote my drop. Let me see. Uh, oops. Drop. Custom code within the destructor. Okay. Uh, All right. Let's implement drop. Impl sdl. Uh, window actually impl drop for sdl window uh, and it's gonna be fn drop um, so window um, it's gonna be mutable self uh, da, 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 da. and essentially what we're doing here well of course it's gonna be unsafe right self uh, role and it's gonna be sdl uh, destroy window, right? Destroy window. Isn't get error supposed to work with C printf? Why are we expecting UTF-8 then? Well, because if it's if it works with printf, it is by definition UTF-8. Mm. All right. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Expected value found uh, modules. Uh, wait. Wait. This is what I need. I'm an idiot. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Mm, this is get them fucking perfect meat. Uh, okay, let's try to create a window appropriately. Mm, 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 mm. You know what? Before we create the window, let's also implement the um, constructor for the uh, renderer, right? Uh, let's implement constructor for the renderer. Uh... Oh shit! Somebody actually issued a today command. <laughs> I forgot to update it. <laughs> Uh, learning how to write Rust wrappers. Okay. Mm, so, struct SDL renderer. So this is going to be also a pretty straightforward thing. It's going to be a mutable pointer to row SDL uh, renderer. There we go. Implement SDL renderer, and we're going to implement the constructor for it. So it's going to be create. SDL ren um, create renderer. Okay. So it's 
to be like that. And what we accept in here, we need to accept the SDL window, right? We need to accept the SDL window. Uh, window, uh, mutable reference to SDL window, right? Mutable reference to SDL window and the index and the flags. We might as well also introduce the alias for the flags, but I don't feel like doing that right now. Mm, okay. So this one is going to be unsafe. Uh, and SDL. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, when I create the renderer, when I create the renderer, that returns me an SDL renderer. Okay, so this is going to be a row renderer. And window. Right. Uh, we have to take the window and use the role version of it, then an index and then the flags. Okay, so if role renderer is null after all of that, we have to throw an error in a similar way. Oh yeah, yeah, so we have to return this kind of stuff. So it's going to be a result. Left one is the right one. Uh, so that means it's going to be still renderer, actually self. And then here is going to be just a string. There we go. Q. Um, mm, 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 mm. Q, Q, Q. <sighs> so I'm gonna copy paste this entire thing. Um, so, ha. Huh. Can I? Mm. Can I create a function? Something like this. L let me show you what I mean. Uh, function SDL uh, error result. Right. And it's going to be, let's say, um, it's going to be templated. And uh, not templated, but generic. Right. And in here, it's also not going to accept anything, but it is going to return T STR. And can we just move this entire shite in there? Because we're going to be reusing it quite often. Oh my god. This is not helpful, by the way. So the, the, whatever Rust FMT is trying to do, it is not goddamn fucking helpful in any way. Uh, I have no idea what it's trying to do, but it just doesn't help. Um, okay, so basically this. So SDL error result. And once we have this function, right, once we have the function, uh, we can do SDL error result. Can we do something like that? You see? Um, it doesn't care about the specific type, it's, it's going to be doing the same thing uh, over and over again. Mm. <clears throat> uh, alright, alright, alright. Mm -hmm. This is SDL error. And I am the asshole after that. Okay. So, uh, let me see. So, if it's null, mm, we need to do a self row, row renderer. Ah, fuck. Mm -hmm. So let's see if it's gonna compile or not and what it exactly is gonna tell us. Expected life to. <sighs> Fuck you. Okay. <sighs> to be fair, we know for a fact. We know for a fact that uh, SDL is using some sort of like. In okay. We don't know for a fact. Let's go to the source code of SDL. We can always check that. Sure, uh, we can always check that. Um, so let's find the grep rn SDL get error. All right. So let's find it. Mm, here it is. Um, and what is it doing? It gets an error buffer. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at it. Get an error buffer. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So if threads disabled, it uses something called SDL global error. Okay, it's a, it's a static one. Look at that. It's a static one. If threading is enabled, 
uh, it leaves for probably, I mean, I think it is safe to assume that whatever is returned by the SDL get error actually has a lifetime of the whole um, of the whole program. So I think it is safe to assume that, uh, from what I can see at least, right? From what I can see. So uh, TLS. Mm, 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 mm. So that's exactly what we're, we're going to try to assume. We're going to say static. Uh, and everything that is returned by these kind of things is going to be static. Uh, do, 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 do we have any other place? So this is error and this is another one. This is going to be static. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Mm, okay. Uh, okay, so call to unsafe. Yeah, yeah, so let's actually do unsafe. So this is a call to unsafe. Okay, that, that looks uh, look, looks okay. This one is never used. This one... Uh... Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. It's intrinsically never used. Okay, I do agree with that. I do, in fact, agree with that. Okay, so here's the render, we created the render, and now we need to implement drop for uh, SDL, uh, SDL renderer, right? We're implementing drop for SDL renderer, and drop is gonna be taking uh, mute self. By the way, uh, Rust FMT is so goddamn slow. It's slower than A style. It is way slower than A style. Just wanted, just wanted to mention that. Uh, SDL destroy uh, renderer, and we're gonna provide the self role renderer. Mm -hmm. uh, and save. All right. Okay. Here is unsafe. Okay, so it seems to be working. Seems to be twerking. Uh, now we use a bunch of functions uh, which are part of the renderer. You know what I want to do? I want to move all of these functions to um, to the methods of render itself. Right. So all of these functions like uh, set render, draw color, uh, present, clear, um, and so on and so forth. I think they should be methods of the renderer. So let's quickly do that. Uh, let me see. Uh, SDL renderer. Right. SDL renderer. Mm -hmm. So let's actually start from this thing. So this is just to create a window. Um, then uh, set draw color. So this is the first thing we want to have. Uh, set draw color, mm -hmm. which is going to accept a mutable self uh, and the colors. Right, it's going to accept the mutable self and the colors and it will probably return whether this thing succeeded or not all right so in that particular case it may return um right part is not important uh and the left part is uh str static str so this is what we want to have so then we're going to have a present uh right present just accepts that present just accepts that Present. Uh, then clear. Uh, do we need anything else? Present clear and set color. I guess that's it. I guess that's everything we need to implement in here. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so let's put it this way. Unsafe. Uh, all right. So this is going to be unsafe. SDL. Uh, set render draw color self row r g b a and uh, this entire thing can fail right and if this thing mm, uh, sdl error result this is how we're gonna do that this function is so goddamn useful holy shit I think I had a stroke of, ge stroke of genius uh, uh, of implement by implementing this function. Because, holy shit, this is so convenient. 
<laughs> right? So yeah, you have a SDL error, you just call that and it just gives you everything. And if I want to uh, like change this kind of behavior later, I don't have to change it like everywhere, like only in this function. Uh, all right, so this is cool. <laughs> um, okay, so if it fails, we're gonna do that. Um, I guess otherwise uh, we want to do something like okay, okay, there we go. So, all right. Um, present. Speaking of present. Uh, unsafe. Right, so it's gonna be if SDL uh, pres uh, render render present self row less than zero is gonna be just SDL like this else. Okay, okay. Alright, so and then clear. So it's gonna be like this. Unsafe if SDL clear or in the clear uh, self roll less than zero. SDL error result. It's gonna be okay, okay, cool. Uh, so I ported all of them, hopefully. I didn't even have to use Biden, by the way. I didn't have to even use C Biden. Okay, and it didn't work where I expected. Uh, wait a second. Oh shit! They never fail. Wait, wait a second. SDL render present. Mm. Okay, it doesn't. It never fails. I didn't know that it never fails. I keep forgetting that it never fails. Apparently. Okay, that, that's cool. So that means I can simplify this shit. So what about uh, SDL clear then? Does it also not... Uh, that never fails? I'm pretty, it does fail. Okay, so that means I fucked up the original uh, original thing. So it has to be I32. Uh, okay, good. So, and everything compiles. Perfect. All right. All right, all right, all right. Um, you know what? Um, I also want to create an SDL thingy. You know, an object that initializes the whole SDL thing. Mm, if you know what I mean. Mm, so let me see. Struct SDL. Let's actually just create an SDL. It's not gonna store anything. Oh, I, I can... <sighs> okay. Rust phantom data. I, I do remember something like that. Can I use a phantom data for this thing? Um, zero size tab used to mark thing as act like the own type t maybe in this case i don't have to do that can i have empty structs <laughs> rust empty struct um in, uh, initializing empty structs uh wait where is an empty struct i don't see an empty struct in here wait what this is not an empty struct This is not an empty struct. So, okay. Uh, they're actually quite different and both... Uh, okay. Okay, this probably can do something like this then. Uh, let me try to just compile that and see how it behaves. Oh, it's totally fine. Okay. Oh, th that's totally fine then. Alright. Implement SDL. Um, and what we're gonna do here is gonna be a fan uh, init and we're gonna accept the flags all right we're gonna accept the flags so it's flags u32 and it will return self and in here is gonna be unsafe and um, in here as well mm, 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 mm. sdl init sdl init flags if this entire thing is less than zero, uh, we're going to be returning... Yeah, it has to fail. So, result, left is right, right is left. Uh, static, 
str. Uh, okay, in this case, uh, str error result. Otherwise, okay, okay, okay. So, and also, if we implement drop for sdl, uh, it's going to be fn drop uh, mutable self. And in here, the only thing we're going to do, we're going to just call sdl quit and nothing particularly special. It never fails. Uh, so, let me let me see. So, do we need anything else? Uh, we probably need some safe bindings for the delay. And for the events and whatnot. And for the events. You know what? SDL events doesn't require anything special. So what I'm thinking is that we can make a poll event. We can make a poll event a part of the SDL itself. I think this is a good idea. Uh, so fn poll event and we're going to accept event which is a mutable uh, reference here sdl event and it will return a boolean right and let's implement that so it's going to be unsafe Ooh, all right sdl uh, poll event poll event uh, event as a mutable sdl event Right, just like that. Uh, to, to the term, and uh, the, the thing we need to return here, we need to return whether it's greater than zero, right? Whether it's greater than zero, and I think that's it. That's the entire thing in here. And uh, you know, this could be also delay. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it has to be a mutable self. It has to be a mutable self because it modifies the state of the whole SDL. That makes sense. Holy shit, that's actually five head. Uh, poll event modifies the state of the whole SDL because it has a global buffer of events. That's why we have to do it like that. Delay uh, probably also modifies something within the state of the uh, of the SDL, so that's why we have to keep it like that. Okay, so this one is going to be just unsafe. Uh, SDL, um, SDL delay, and uh, it also should accept uh, the delay in milliseconds. I don't remember. SDL delay msu32 and we're gonna put it in here and I don't think it fails ever so I don't have to even worry about that cool all right so I think I implemented everything I think I literally implemented everything uh, all right can I now do the following thing so we're gonna start by yeah let's let's just try to compile that and see what's gonna happen okay um, self Oh yeah, it has to return self. So we have to return self. Uh, yeah, we, we have to return that, apparently. Okay, makes sense. Perfect. Okay, let's try, let's try this thing. Uh, it's gonna be let sdl, um, sdl init, sdl init video. There we go. Compiles and works. The next thing we need to do, we need to create a window, right? So this is going to be something, maybe... I just had an interesting idea. What if create window is going to be part of SDL? This is actually a pretty interesting idea. So uh, basically, create a window. Yeah, move the constructor of the window into the SDL into the SDL. So is that a good idea? Is that a good idea? I think it is. I think it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, so let me let me demonstrate you. So um, where is the window? So yeah, create a window. I'm gonna put it like this. Yeah, so window itself is not gonna have any particular implementations, but maybe it will. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, a little bit later. So SDL. Uh, so this is implementation and um, yeah, so this is going to be create a window, all right, create window, it will accept um, a mutable self. I wonder if we can just un, uh, mark self as unused because I don't plan to use it, but it's still needed, uh, kind of. Um, so in this case, it's going to be actually SDL window. Uh, SDL window and this is going to be SDL window. Let's see if it's going to compile or not. 
it does compile. So that means the next thing we can do after we created a SDL, we need to create a window. So it's going to be SDL um, window. Okay, and it, I think it's not going to compile. Um, create window. Uh, we have to do something like um, hello from Rust. Uh, 0, 0, 0860 SDL window resizable. There we go. And it should not work according to my calculations. Uh, yep, because this is result. Okay, um, one of the things we can probably do, we can uh, expect um, could not in initialize um, Yeah, I could not initialize SDL. All right, so and it will probably print the error accordingly, wouldn't it? I think does it. Yeah. Okay. Let's actually do it like that. Whatever. Uh, expect um, could not create uh, SDL window, right? So something like this. Uh, all right. So unused variable. So this is fine. And in here. So what's wrong in here? Uh, mutable. Okay, so this thing has to be mutable. Yeah, that makes sense. And this thing also has to be mutable. Perfect. Uh, then uh, we need to create a renderer. And you know what, SDL renderer? Uh, I want to make SDL renderer constructor a part of the window API. Right, so you create a window, and from window you create a renderer for that window. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Um, yeah, you cannot create a renderer like that, you cannot create it directly, but you can create it from a window, create a renderer, a renderer, and this one is going to be just self, a self, a mutable self, mm, mutable self, so and in here, uh, we create a SDL renderer, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And create a SDL renderer, there we go, so let's see what's going to happen, is it com does it compile, it doesn't compile, uh, because what this is what we have to do window uh, create a renderer window create renderer and what you have to put in there um, you have to yeah we already put a window there implicitly then we have to do minus one and then SDL uh, um, hardware accelerated something I forgot the name of the flag render accelerated yes 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 uh, render accelerated and then we're gonna expect um, could uh, not initialize SDL renderer. There we go. Fuck. Okay. So window row. It has to be self row. Do we have anything else? Okay. So that went okay. That went okay. Next, we need to create a mutable uh, quit. Let uh, mutable quit is going to be false uh, while not quit. While not quit, we're gonna have an event, uh, a mutable event, as a matter of fact, SDL event. Um, so I have to maybe initialize it with default shit. Uh, well, yeah, maybe it would be actually better to have some default implementation for this thing, but I'm too lazy right now. Uh, okay, all right, looks good. And while SDL call event, and I provide mutable pointer to the event. If event type equal SDL quit, we set quit to true. Simple as that. Uh, after that, we need to do this entire stuff. So we have to set a render color, set draw color, as a matter of fact. So it's going to be a renderer uh, set draw color, and the draw color is going to be a red one. So this is the draw color. Um, we also want to expect the result, right? We also want to expect the result. <laughs> well, maybe unwrap in this particular case, so uh, because it's going to be easier. Then clear, uh, renderer clear, right? Then do we do anything else? Then we present, renderer uh, present. And then SDL delay uh, 100 milliseconds, and it never fails. All right, so this is the expected API. This is the safe version of this specific API. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, pres oh, I forgot the present never fails. Yeah, present also never fails for some reason. Okay, that works. And it handles. So here is my version of a safe SDL API. Uh, I kind of like it, not gonna lie, because it's very close to how SDL actually works. Uh, because the APIs, the wrappers that I saw on the internet, they have some event bumps or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, so yeah, SDL, you have a global state of the SDL and uh, you pull events from the SDL itself because it has a global queue of, of events or something like that. So yeah. So first you create an SDL, then from SDL you create a window, then from the window you create a renderer, and then you iterate and you pull events from the SDL and you render and clear everything, and there we go. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, and it's actually pretty cool that it works. Uh, yeah, that's pretty That's pretty cool. So now I understand how to write a wrap such... Uh, write such wrapping uh, so do we want to do anything else do we want to do anything more interesting than that uh maybe some animations um so we can also actually make it less harsh on your eyes so it's gonna be like this or maybe um, let's actually make it 50 50 50. Mm. So, does anyone have any questions? Um, SDL quit in the end also. Uh, 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 what if you drop SDL early, though? What if you shoot your leg with a gun? What's gonna happen? Hmm? So, it's, 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 it's a very strange question, like, well, what if you shoot your, your leg? What's gonna happen? Well... Like, I don't understand even the point of this question. It's like a really strange question. Um, it's not even that interesting of a question because the, the answer is kind of obvious. Like, come on, seriously. Um, not interesting, not creative question. Just, it's obvious. Does anyone have any other questions? Mm. Kick up three D four D three D three D three. Let me check it first. Uh. It's not even a caller. One, two, three. Did I not copy paste it properly? Oh yeah, I don't know. Uh. Okay. Mm. But I'm not sure why. Why do we have to do it like that? Maybe we can just do it like that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is gonna be a 4D, uh, 3D, 3D. I guess I'm done with the like learning how to do wrappers, so I understand it. Um, does anyone need this? Does anyone need this? Uh, maybe. Uh, I can put it on gist if anyone is interested in this kind of shit. Um... Maybe not. 
Or maybe I put it. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the gist uh, because this was just an exercise in um, in uh, writing the um, wrappers and whatnot. So uh, okay, so this is gonna be X. I suppose yeah, this is how I have to do that. So uh, main RS. Mm -hmm. So let's create a public gist, and uh, if anyone is interested in uh, what we just wrote, you can check it out here. You can check it out here. Uh, so, all right. All right. Cool. Now I can safely remove all of that because it's not needed, actually. So fuck all of that. Um, do, 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 do. So let's make a small break. Uh, let's make a small break, and after the small break, we're gonna start working on Leap Sound IO, and we'll see what we can do with Leap Sound IO specifically. Mm, that's gonna be pretty interesting, I think. Oh, by the way, do I have a Leap Sound IO? Did I already install it? Uh, search Leap Sound. Mm, 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 mm. So we have a Leap Sound IO dev. Let's install it real quick. Uh, apt install lib sound io dev lib sound io dev mm. oh there's something from the previous update mm, 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 mm. Uh, so um, <clears throat> package config package config uh, list all grab sound Okay, it doesn't have it doesn't have package config uh, configuration apparently. Yikes. Uh, okay, can I just find it user share lib? I think it's lib grab sound. Uh, there's no such. Uh, so what's that? It's gonna be maybe. Ah, wh why? Wait. Where is the lib? Is it just lib? I don't remember. I don't know how to Linux, I'm sorry. Um, sound. Lib C sounds. Okay. Uh, let's actually make it case insensitive. Uh, okay, so we're up to a pretty great adventure. All right, so let's make a small break because, yeah. Um, it's going to be three minutes and yeah, you guys have fun. Oh shit. Uh, you guys have fun.
Yo, what's up? How are everyone's doing? Let's make a cup of tea. What do you guys think? Does anyone have any questions while I'm making a cup of tea? Um... Does anyone have any on-topic questions? <laughs> chat? I'm reading the chat. Where's your messages when I'm actually reading you? Hmm? You have an opportunity to ask me something. But preferably on topic, of course. Preferably on topic. So, uh, I have some bindings where I put my function pointers into an array. Does that incur performance penalties when calling? I have no idea. Uh, you can probably benchmark that and research that yourself and tell us then. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. Just research that. Does anyone have any other on-topic questions? This was not really on-topic question, but... Um... Is there a way to override operators for enum in Rust or implement or func to use enums as flags? Uh, as far as I know, there is a general mechanism for overloading operators in Rust. It's you just implement the corresponding operations, don't you? Um, so let me see. So it's something like ops add. Right. So for as far as I know, you implement add for any type and that overloads the operator plus for that type. Enumeration is a type. So the question is rather why wouldn't that work for enumerations but would work for any other type? Is that like why do you think it wouldn't work? Um, mm, I think you don't really not using Rust correct. So you mean I'm using it correctly if I don't really not using Rust correct. And that means I'm using it correctly. Right. Did I understood you correctly? I th I, okay, so th thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you just implement the traits for the operation. Yeah, yeah, th this is basically what you do. Uh, man, I ran out of chocolate. I really ran out of chocolate. I really want more chocolate. <laughs> Not using must is correct. Oh, no, no, you, you shouldn't make fun of Rust developers. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you shouldn't make fun of them. Yeah. I, I keep forgetting about that. So, uh, does anyone have any other questions, by the way? Um, does anyone have any other questions? What's the benefit of wrapping a C library versus recreating a library in Rust? Is it primary time? I don't know. My answer is I don't know what's the benefit of any of this. I think generally programming is kind of like a pointless activity. Uh, like anything you do in programming, just like, it's kind of pointless. It's just a waste of time and waste of money generally. So. Uh, it's unsafe to fun with Rust. Yes. What's the criteria of safety, by the way? People throw words safe and safe quite like quite often left and right, but what's the criteria? How do you know that something's safe and something is not safe? Uh, and whether that criteria is useful or not, how can we know that this criteria is actually useful? Have you considered RIIT? I have no idea what that is. Imagine creating Zor Zorg and a GTK in Rust just to create Hello World window, yeah. Uh, when you end up making someone pregnant, it wasn't safe. Why? Mm -hmm. 
if it's consensual and it was planned all along, why is it unsafe? I don't understand. Um, safe and rest criteria is not around unsafe brackets. Ah, I see. That's a pretty good criteria, I suppose. Safe is when you think everything is good while very slowly falling into big hole. Hmm. Into big hole. Interesting. All right. So I'm gonna go to the kitchen, turn on the kettle, and I'm gonna be back, and we're gonna start working on Leap Sound I O. Oh, before we, we go, uh, we're gonna do that. Um, uh so let me see let me see wrapping celebrities and see uh yeah so the original idea was generating sound with rust using leap sound io uh, maybe i'm gonna actually make it a little bit more readable like this yeah look at that that's goddamn fucking perfect uh why stop at lips? Rewrite the kernel in Rust. I propose to rewrite your mom in Rust. Ah, got it, got it. Ah. So let me take a look. Um, we're gonna close all of this shite. I'm gonna close all of this uh, shite documentation. Mm, so I wanna take a look at the example. Is there any lib sound uh, IO examples in C? We're gonna start with examples in C. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. So this is that. Uh, okay. Oh, is that? Wait, is the leap sound that you're created by the Zika? The, the Zika after? Really? I didn't know that. This is actually pretty cool. Finally. So does it count as me trying out Zig? If I try a library by the Zig creator, does it count as that I already tried Zig? So you can stop asking me to try Zig. Uh, I, I guess it counts. Okay, so I'm gonna say I tried LeapSound.io. So yeah, I, you, you, I don't have to try Zig anymore. Cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, num, 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 num. Okay, here's an example. Cool. Uh, holy shit, that's a pretty involved example. Not gonna lie. Bruh, bruh. Okay, so let's include this thing. Uh, main.c. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> Have you seen sales comment on Zig? Is it like Zig is not C and that's why it's bad? Or what? I personally have nothing against Zig. Seriously, I have nothing against Zig, except the fact that everyone fucking annoys me with that goddamn fucking language. If people didn't annoy me with Zig, I would definitely give it a try. 
But since everyone is just asking zig 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 zig, like I just don't want to try it. I'm sorry. I'm I'm this kind of a weird person that if people ask me too much to do something, I just don't want to do that. So yeah, if people w wouldn't ask me about zig, I would try it on the stream. Maybe I even liked it, but sorry, it's just if you want, nah, don't want. Thank you. Uh, all right. So let me see. <clears throat> Uh, to 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 sound. Do we have sound here? Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So this is gonna be. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Sound IO create. All right. Pretty straightforward. Create a sound IO context. You may create multiple instances of this to connect. Blah 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 Okay. Um, so the the thing I want to try, by the way, is just um, it's called S, right? Uh, and if S fails, uh, out of memory, that's that's making a lot of assumptions about this call to be fair, but. Uh, Okay. If and only if memory could not be allocated. Okay, sure. Um, can I take a look at the implementation? Wait a second. Is the implementation of this function literally a single call to mail? <laughs> I want to see that, by the way. Can I, can I, can I <laughs> just download this entire thing, please? I want to see that. <laughs> Uh, and it's just like it's, it's kind of it's a little bit sus not gonna lie it's a little bit sus uh third party <laughs> uh git clone all right so let's see mm, leap sound uh grab what was it called i already forgot i probably have to go to main mm. Mm, grep or n not really o s well okay not really it it also sets up some things and whatnot yeah uh, hmm. yeah anyway if s equal no Mm -hmm. So it can be something like that. Uh, you know what? Yeah. So the only reason I'm doing it like that is because I want to see if I can just link with sound AO. Uh, if I can just link with sound AO. Sound AO. Uh, out of memory. So this is going to be out of memory. Alright. So if I try to compile this entire thing. If I try to compile this entire thing, uh, void. Now well, let's put it like that. It's gonna be lib. Uh huh. Q. And can I do something like sound IO? Okay, so we can just you know, swap, work with it like that. Work with it like that. By the way, why nobody annoys me to try out sound IO? <laughs> why specifically Zeke? It's kind of strange. Uh, all right, let's pour a cup of tea. Port audio. Oh, shit. Did I want you to try port audio instead? Port audio. Uh, we already started to work on sound audio. Very well then. So I remember that I wanted to try a cross-platform so cross-platform sound library, and I don't remember which one. And the way I decided before the stream, I just googled up, and apparently the Andrew work won with better C uh, CEO. So uh, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> we already decided to work on this one, though, so we're using this on this one then. Um, so sound is the zoom version of port value. Oh, okay. Alrighty, so let's start uh, twerking on that. Um, they're all pretty similar anyway. No way! Oh my god! The libraries that work with sound are similar! Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, let me see. So it's gonna be extern uh, C, and what we're gonna have here? Uh, what we're gonna have? They're similar. Uh -huh. So create uh, sound that you create. Um, yeah. Sound uh -huh. So can we safely assume that sound IO uh, structure is opaque? Is it a safe assumption? Is it a very safe? I think it's a safe assumption. I think it's pretty safe. So let's do type uh, sound IO uh, and it's gonna be just um, I already forgot. I think C void is located in STD F5. Uh, C void. Even assumptions are unsafe. Exactly. You can never be sure. Uh, Fn. So it's going to be a mutable a pointer to sound IO. All right. Mm. Mm. Why not struct sound IO instead? Whatever. Uh, I only started to to write the code. At this at this particular stage, the code is unfinished, so it just doesn't matter. Uh, when we have nothing working, it just doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> like it's just whatever. Uh, sound IO. Okay. So this one, do I need to make it mutable? Let's actually mark it as mutable just in case. And oh, of course, uh, unsafe. Yeah, all of that is going to be definitely unsafe. We're writing a very unsafe Rust, by the way. Very, very unsafe Rust. I'm a little bit tired already. This is because I've been streaming for three hours, so that actually explains everything. Um, what's up, Jiang? Oh, shit. Is he okay? I'm not okay, dude. Come on. <laughs> I haven't been okay for like eight years already. So. Uh, okay, so is no. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, sound. Sound. I am out of memory. There we go. Uh, otherwise, uh, maybe we can do something like this. Um, print ln uh, successfully initialized. Uh, since we created sound IO context, I think it's a context. Uh... Okay, let's just try to run it. All right, so what do we have? Uh, this is a new thing, and we need to do the link thingy. Yeah, right, we have to do the link, and the link is gonna be sound IO. Right, so it's gonna be sound IO. Um, all right. Is it name? Oh my god, okay. 
Uh, do I have a gist? Link name, okay. It's actually pretty good that I saved this gist, so now I can, I'm gonna use it as a reference every time because I can remember. Okay, so uh, successful created uh, sound context, cool. So uh, let's go back and uh, uh, we can try to connect to, to an audio. So we need to have this function in here. Uh, yep, connect and it should return different kinds of errors. Oh, okay. So possible errors, um, sound error invalid, no memory, system resources, no such client, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let me see what we have in here. So this is going to be like this, fn. Uh, we're also going to accept uh, immutable sound io. There's immutable sound io. Uh, and it's going to return i32 i32 so error ah it returns an error if it's positive or something right so when we also have a uh, have to have a function sound your str error uh all right sound your str error returns the string okay so we're gonna have something like this in here so it returns this stuff and um can we have uh, something like this. Can you actually move these things inside here? I think that would be kind of useful. Uh, sound IO error, right? And it's going to be i32, and this is what we're going to return every time. Sound IO error. Mm -hmm. Sound IO error. Um, okay, there we go. So, and in here it will return a C string. So, and uh, let me see, let me see. So it has to be a const string thingy, right? It has to be const string thingy. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Get error const c char. Okay, const c char. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, so it's a row os. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So let's see if it's gonna work. Um, is it gonna compile? It doesn't compile. Uh, extern blocks define existing foreign types. Okay, so I have to move them uh, outside of the extern. I, I was hoping that I can actually keep them inside of that block, but there's nothing much you can do about it. Maybe I can put it inside of a module. That sounds like a pretty cool idea. So uh, something like mod sound io sys. If you know what I mean, if you know what I mean, um, yeah, All right, um, yeah, and since it's gonna be a sys, right, I can easily just get rid of these prefixes, um, yeah, so let's actually do it like that, maybe let's let's not make it sys, uh, just a regular one, so this is gonna be the sound we create, um, so this is gonna give us that, ah, and it collide. Okay, so let's let's make it sys because it's gonna collide with my variables. So let's actually keep it like that. Um, so so so. Uh, mm. <sighs> mm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it's no. Yeah. Can I? Can I just do it like that? Uh huh. So what it's complaining about? Uh, cannot find type C void. Really. So these kind of imports are not visible inside of these modules. Okay. 
That's very interesting. Uh, oh, it's it's also private and shit, so I also have to make sure that these things are not private. Oh, shit! Uh, Rebel does not need to be mutable. So, they could not be... Okay, they cannot be in a separate module like that. I see. They cannot be in a separate module like that. All right. Uh, I, I was hoping that it's maybe I would be able to do that. Uh, but maybe I can put that into a separate file. That would be kind of... Ah, they need to, to have the specific names. I, I remember that. Okay, I, I, I get it. I get it. They have to have... Yeah. You see, I'm already tired. Yeah, it's actually took... Oh boy, um, figuring out how to write these bindings, like on the spot, actually drained so much energy of mine uh, that I, I can't think anymore. So, Because I didn't prepare for the stream at all, like, everything I did here is just like I learned on the spot. Uh, and it's goddamn hard, especially trying to ignore the chat, uh, which is trying to backseat you and stir in the in the direction they want you to go, not you want, want you go. If you know what I mean, I cannot even speak, that's how difficult it is. Alright. <clears> hmm. <throat> mm. All right, so uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard. Because uh, a lot of a lot of the times, all right, I don't care what is the right way to do thing. You probably noticed that. I don't care what is the right way to do thing. What I care about is whether I understand what I'm doing, right? Where they have understanding of what is go of what is going on, um, right? And once they have understanding of what's going on, then I can think about what is right or wrong. Um, so, because like right or wrong is just like all of this dogmatic bullshit. I don't care about it. Um, okay. Uh, so we also need to destroy maybe. So. Okay. Sound flush events. Okay, so we also need to. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we need to connect. Uh, let, let, let's do the connect. I, I was in the middle of working on connect. Uh, right, I was in the middle of working on connect. So, and I can provide the sound AU. Right, I provided the sound AU. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I won't be able to just do something like this, right? Um, but I can always do something like this then, right, where I can save the return, right? And if return uh, is greater than zero, if return is greater than zero, uh, we can panic, panic. Uh, sound you could um, could not connect audio, uh, and then we have to do sound you. Uh, str error, str error, uh, return. So maybe uh, it has to be like called error. Let's actually call it error. I think it's gonna be a little better. So this is gonna be error. Um, and of course, uh, this is a string and uh, we have to use CSTR. So if I remember correctly, this is how we have to do it. CSTR. Uh, yeah. Uh, where is my gist? From pointer, okay. See, str from pointer, this is what we provide. Mm. Okay. To str. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, 
let's, let's also unwrap it. You know what, I think we won't have enough time to do anything interesting uh, with Sounder you anyway. Uh, plus, I'm a little bit tired already, right? Because I wasted all my energy on uh, writing this SDL wrapper. So I think I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, we're gonna try to work with Sounder you uh, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow we're gonna continue this entire thing. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call today. That's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. I see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to continue doing all of that after I had uh, a rest because it was difficult, especially it was difficult to ignore the chat today. Uh, rust streams are especially difficult because there is a lot of back sitting. Every, every rust stream is just impossible to for me to stay sane uh, on the rust streams. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna continue doing that tomorrow. So I'm gonna recover, so I can resist the back sitting tomorrow, and we're gonna try to do something interesting with this uh, with this library. Uh, check out our schedule for at, I don't know for what, but you can check out it. Uh, check out our what's channel for archives. Uh, check out our uh, what else? I, I guess to check out our Discord server for offline discussion with the community. And let's maybe raid somebody. So, does anyone is anyone streaming uh, a Rust development um, on, on Twitch? So, I'm down to raid some Rusticians or Roosters. I don't know how people call themselves. I'm not a Rust programmer. Uh, Esther is streaming. So, is she streaming programming? Uh, okay. Why every Why every time I want to rate her, she's not streaming a programming. I'm I'm sorry. I mean, it's like I only I only rate programming. Like I'm well, totally okay to rate her, but she doesn't want to be rated. So, okay, so <laughs> right. Um. Okay, does anyone do does anyone is anyone doing any rust? Hacking, HTB, uh, pure C. Imagine programming in pure C in 2021. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so uns this is unethical. This is unethical. Unethical programming on science and technology section. Yes, I said it. I've said it. We have an unethical programming in science and technology. Anyway, whatever. Um, so let me see. I don't see anything particularly interesting in that. Uh, C++, but I mean... Uh, Brooke Zerker, I don't know who that is, but are they live right now? This is the most important question. Um... Mm, we're checking this right first. Okay. I see Rust. Okay, sure. Asteroids clone with Rust. Okay, I'm okay with, uh, with Regnum. Uh, I, I don't know. So the thing is, it's kind of difficult for me to choose between them because I don't know neither of them, so... I, I just picked the, the first one, so the, the first one won, I guess. Uh, we can raid Mr. Halsey next time, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's just like, I want to raid somebody who's doing Rust. Okay, I already double-checked that Brooke Zerker is doing Rust, so... Alright, I uh, got ready for the raid, boys and girls, got ready for the raid, and I see you all uh, tomorrow. Love you. Mwah.